checking accounts, savings accounts, everybody has them, but how do you use them effectively? In this video, I am talking with Jason with MyBankTracker.com, and we're gonna go over this together. Hey, what's up guys? It's Justine with Debt Free Millennials. We are coming at you live from FinCon 19 here in Washington, D.C. And I have Jason with MyBankTracker.com here with us. So good to have you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we met last year, last year. and he was in another video on ideas on how to make extra income. If you guys haven't checked out that video, I'll link to it in the description below. But you had some really good tips on just switching bank accounts. Yes. Yeah, and so, I mean, we look at it, at my bank track, we look at it in so many different ways that, you know, there's a ton of ways you can kind of like use checking accounts and savings accounts to your advantage. Yeah. And that's basically who we are. You know, we're all about the maximizing the relationship and perfecting the relationship between banks and consumers. Yeah. So kind of give us the background on, because you're the founder yes. of my bank tracker. So give us the background of how you started it and how it helps people. Uh, yeah, we started it back in the financial crisis days. So 2008, 2009, it was a pretty scary time. And so uh, we quit our jobs and we started, a, you know, we started my bank tracker. And when we started it, we had the idea of just, you know, being fully transparent and making sure that everybody could just see the terms very clear and plain. Yeah. So everybody can just look at it black and white and say, this is the account that is best for me. And so that's how we started. And that's kind of like the foundation was there from the very beginning of transparency. So if you go onto our site, you'll see that we have 5,000, over 5,000 banks, right? So... You know, right now, today, we have the way we work is basically on comparisons, but we also have a really cool feature called a quiz where you can, we'll ask you like five questions. And at the end of it, we'll come up with a recommendation again about that perfect relationship between you and your bank. And I think that's so important because so many of us, and myself included, I signed up for a savings account when I was mm -hmm. a kid and just kept them all through college. Even when I got married, I, w I still had the same bank. And right. I had no idea. I was not really yeah. making any money with them. Yeah, so that happens to everybody. I mean, I had my parents, you know, sign me up for a bank account when I was young with the bank that they had. And I kept that until all the way through college and everything, you know. And so, and I made a lot of mistakes in college with my finances. I just didn't understand the whole ecosystem. Now, obviously, I understand it much better. But when you're talking about, like, your basic checking account, your basic savings account, Oftentimes, you, it's just not the right match. It's as simple as saying that, you know, you have uh, the bank that your parents kind of signed you up for and you kind of just deal with it. In reality, yeah. there's a lot of different, you know, features and functionality that banks offer that you might be able to take advantage of. So many of us have checking accounts mm -hmm. and a lot of millennials, uh, comment below if this is you, but we have our paychecks and then they're direct deposited into our checking account. And so if, if we're putting all of our money there, you know, checking accounts aren't really earning interest. And should we be doing that? Well, I have this philosophy. I started years and years ago, and I believe I borrowed it from somebody else. You know, just how all good ideas start. They're just, someone starts it and everybody just borrows it. But basically, the way I like to operate, and maybe this isn't for everybody, but I look at the savings account as that rainy day fund, right? But yeah. it's also earning interest. And so oftentimes, many times higher interest than a checking account. And so what I do is I direct deposit into my savings account, right? Whoa. Take that money, let that earn the interest, okay? Because oftentimes people, when they're direct depositing into their checking accounts, by the end of the month, you know, they have their $50 a month that kind of gets transferred from checking to savings. Mm -hmm. And that's all they do. And that's good. But then they spend the rest of it, right? Yeah. So instead, I deposit into my savings account, savings account, and then every month, since I know my expenses so well, I will top up my checking account, and so all the expenses still flow through the checking account. It's just the ink. So I treat that basically as like a little income that I'm giving myself, yeah. but anything that's remaining is left in the savings account all in already earning interest versus earning very little interest in a checking account. So are you manually transferring from your savings to your checking? Yes, you can month? automate that. You can automate that. And I've often thought about, uh, that's a great product idea. If somebody just automates that, someone should do that. But basically, 
what we recommend at my bank tracker is to look back like three months worth of expenses and try to find, first of all, you might be getting hit with a lot of fees um, that you may not realize. And you might realize also that you go to Target and you pick out like your detergent for $15 and then you spend another 100 on all the extra stuff that Target has like special sales on. And you do that once a week and all of a sudden that's $400 a month that you're spending that you don't have to be spending. It's mm. not essentials. Yep. So what we try to do at my bank tracker is basically say, know your expenses well enough that you should be able to automate it. But at the same time, roughly transfer that amount of expenses in every month. And that way, as you start using that money in your checking account, you'll see it start to dwindle. And then you have that tension inside that says, oh, I, I have to slow down. I can't spend the money because it's not there. Mm -hmm. In reality, you tricked yourself because it's in your savings account. Wow, game changer. And I like how you say, look back at previous months and your spending history. How have you been able to do that for yourself? Um, so for myself, you know, I have a mortgage, right? So I know there's some fixed costs in this, um, but oftentimes with kids' school, with, um, you know, a new pair of sneakers my kid needs because he's playing soccer or whatever, there's always random expenses that are coming up that totally. you don't really plan for. And so I use a bunch of different tools, but I'm really, uh, I geek out on a lot of that stuff. So I'm using YNAB, I'm using Mint, I'm using personal capital, I'm using... Wow. I'm using probably like six or seven tools and I get alerts all the time, like Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, especially with credit stuff. But everybody's looking at the data. And so it depends on what I'm trying to get out of it and tease out of it. But I prefer actually YNAB, you need a, you need a budget yeah. because that one is more about bucketing. And so what you're able to do is basically say $400 in extra expenses, right? You give yourself a little bit of like fun money. Yeah. And so you add that in, then you add in the grocery bill, then you add in the utility bill and all these other things. And then you have a general idea how much you spend month over month in expenses. And then you average that out. You dump that money in once a month into your, back into your checking account from your savings. And then you work off of that. You could also just download the last three months of your bank statements too, and look yeah. at it one by one. And that's what I used to do before we had all these tools because you don't know what you're spending it on until you actually like bucket it, add it up, and you know whether you're using the envelope method for your budgeting or if you're using YNAB or something else. Like you just need to make sure that you know what's in there because oftentimes, in one of our studies actually shows, people are just wasting money on fees. Yes. Oh my gosh, the fees are ridiculous. And I like how hands-on you are with your budget so that you can make this savings to checking transfer. It almost sounds like you have this pay, pay yourself first mentality so that the savings is there and you can increase that. We also have the budget toolkit through Debt Free Millennials. That is a Google spreadsheet where you can track your income and expenses. Regardless of what you use though, the important thing is is to track your spending. Look, you have to look at it. And you yeah. have to look, yeah. You, It's like ripping off the bandaid. There's so many people who are afraid to look at their bank account. So what would you say to those people? Because I have so many people come and watch the channel that just kind of have that fear mentality yeah. with money. Uh, I mean. What's your best advice? So my best, ad I mean, I was there. I was a college kid, broke, and I was like, I just don't want to look because it yeah. hurts. And so uh, my best, my best advice is to, you know, you can delay it, but you're eventually going to see the numbers at some point because you're going to, you're going to swipe your ATM card and it's going to say insufficient funds, right? So no, like get out of the mindset of waiting for something to bounce or getting an overdraft, get out of that mindset and just be more proactive. And so mm -hmm. you have to be proactive and you have to just suck it up. I mean, there's no other way to say it really. Yeah. And we've all made past financial mistakes. Yeah. So knowing that your future is bigger than your past and being able to kind of move forward with using these financial products to our advantage is so key. I love that. Some other banking questions that I have. Should your checking and savings accounts be with the same bank? Not necessarily. So it's helpful in some situations without a doubt, like for overdraft protection, for instance, right? Now, again, you have to be careful, careful here. Overdraft protection they will still sometimes charge you a convenience fee, right? So if your checking and savings accounts are linked, you won't get the $35 fee for overdraft, but you might get a $12 convenience fee for them to transfer your savings to checking. 
So in some cases, it could save you. Obviously, we want to be out of the mindset of overdraft fees entirely. With that said, life happens. In reality, what I would prefer in a lot of our readers and a lot of our um, uh, people who visit our site, the content that we generate, are it's almost always going to be around, again, looking at your bank statements. But when you're talking about the difference between banking within the same bank and not, you ultimately can get away with having seven different accounts if you wanted to, right? Yeah, because, and I do. And because, you know, there's a classification of a type of person called a rate chaser, right? Just hopping to the next 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and just like moving the money around. There's right? a name for that? Rate, rate chasers. chasers? Yes. Oh my that's God. That's the name we use anyways. So, but that's how we started, right? My bank tracker started as a comparison table. And so we're always in the mindset of optimizing the relationship. And so you don't have to bank at the same bank. You can totally have six, seven different accounts. And depending on how you use them, it's better, right? Some, especially with checking accounts, well, savings accounts generally are very clear, right? It's like you have your six transaction limit, federally regulated, yep, and you have your FDIC insurance, mm -hmm. and you have an APY, really, you know, that's really not much more to it than that. Yep. With checking accounts, though, you've got ATM fees to think about, you've got overdraft fees to think about, things like that. And so, yep. if you know that you're often hitting the ATM, then switch to a bank that has no fee or low fees for ACMs. Uh, and no fees in most cases usually means reimbursement, right? So you get that $4 charge because you went to this really like crazy concert and there's like a $4 ATM fee or like $8 ATM fee. I've actually seen an $8 ATM fee before. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's amazing what I don't want to bank with that bank right. or ATM fees, right. no. So working with the bank that actually reimburses those is going to be beneficial to you if you know you're going to be hitting a lot of ATMs, for instance. That's one example. Wow. This is insane. Okay. So I think my key takeaway from our conversation was redirecting your direct deposit into the savings account first versus mm -hmm. the checking account. That it, Comment below if you do that or what you think about that. That's really interesting. Um, this is awesome. Thank you so much for all this Thank information. You, also, we didn't even talk about this channel is very beer friendly. <laughs> so we're in D.C. There's actually a good variety of Maryland and Virginia local beers. Have you had any yet? I have. Uh, last night, I had a few of them. And <laughs> a few. I guys. don't recall any of their names, but they were delicious. <laughs> uh, it's, it's always about checking the local beer scene when you're in a new, new place. And I haven't been to D.C. In a, in a couple of years at this point. So I was super excited to see local beers on tap and I thoroughly enjoyed them. Right on. I was very basic last night and did a Sam Adams seasonal. They don't have Sam Adams seasonals in San Diego. So I went with their summer ale. It was very delicious. I'll probably go for something darker. Um, if you guys are East Coast people, let me know what beers do I need to be trying out here. Interesting. This has been an awesome conversation. Thank I'm you. so glad to have you on the channel. Yes, thanks again. for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you guys want to find out more information about My Bank Tracker, where do they need to go? MyBankTracker.com. Easy. I will link to that in the description, and we will catch you in another video, maybe next year. Yes, I'll be back. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Bye. All right. I think um, we just need somebody to stop the tape. He... Heat like heat ledger.